Okay, one thing I want to clear up from the last episode when we were dealing with this profile page. Let's go into show.ejs. So the distinction I want to make is within EJS, this percent dash versus percent equals. And let me demonstrate. So I'm going to create a new user. And I'm going to call this guy bad guy. And as you can see here, I am going to type in some HTML and JavaScript. Now, if we refresh this page, the JavaScript is run actually on the page. And that is not a good thing. So how do we prevent that? Well, let's go back into the code. And by putting in this percent equals, EJS is going to escape any HTML. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And let's reload this page. And now we can see the script, but it's not going to run any of the HTML. So moving on, we have this edit button here but our edit actions haven't been fleshed out yet. So in this episode, we're gonna flesh out the edit action, which is also the update action, the delete action, and first, our index action. So instead of our blueprint action giving us this list uh, in JSON, we wanna go ahead and create our own index action and view, which will be a list of our users. So let's go back in the code. And I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste my index action in. So here, instead of using find one, which is only going to look up one user, we're going to use the find method, which is going to return an array of users. So again, looking at our familiar pattern, it's either going to come back with an error or our users. And we're going to handle the error with this if statement. And then we're going to render our index.ejs view passing down our users as an object. So now let's create our index.ejs file. And I'll just cut and paste it in here. So this is a fairly straightforward table. As you can see, we're going to loop through all of our users. And for each pass of that loop, we're going to insert the ID, name, title, and email. We also have some buttons here to the show, edit, and delete actions. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to go ahead and save it as index.ejs. Let's restart the server. And now when I just go to the user route, instead of getting JSON, we get our nice Twitter bootstrap table. And our show action we know already works. As you can see down here, it's pointing to user slash show and whatever the ID of the user record is. So when I click show, it's going to go to our profile. So now let's flesh out the edit action. So let's go to the code, and I'm going to cut and paste these two actions. So the edit action, like the create action, has two parts. The edit page, where we're going to load up the record that we're going to actually edit, and then an update action that will be initiated when the user clicks submit. So here we have the user model. We're going to find one record. We're going to do that by taking the ID param and passing it to find one, and we're either going to get an error or we're going to get that user back. They're going to pass that user as an object to our view. In this case, the view is going to be associated with edit, so it'll be an edit.ejs file. So let's create that edit.ejs file first. So I'm going to create a new file and paste the HTML and ejs in. And this is a straightforward form. We've got the name, title, and email, our submit button, and then like the sign on form, we're going to have a hidden input field, which is going to take care of our CSRF token. OK, let's go ahead and save this. And I'm going to restart the server. And now when I click on Edit, I get our edit form. But we have an issue here, uh, which will become very apparent as I'm editing this form. So I'll just add a one here. Oh, wait a minute. 
we have our client side validation on this particular form. So I can fix that fairly quickly here. Let's go back into the code. And in our new.ejs file, we have a class form sign in. And then if you look at my custom validate JavaScript here, I'm, I'm calling this on all classes of form sign in. And I want to use the Twitter bootstrap uh, form sign in class. So the way we can take care of that is to create an ID here. Not the most elegant thing, but this will definitely work. And I'm going to call this sign up form. So again, save that. Let's copy it. Go back into new.ejs and create an ID here called signup form. Okay, now we can refresh this page. And now when I make an edit, we don't have the client side validation working on this form. Okay, that's good. But now I need to implement the actual update. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go back to the user controller and let's look at this update action. So like create, update is taking the user model. We have this update method and we're passing the ID that we get from the params as well as all the params that are associated with edit.ejs. And in this case, either we're gonna get an error or it's just gonna work. And if we do get an error, we're just gonna redirect back to our edit page. And on success, we're gonna to point to our pseudo profile page, which is show.ejs, very similar to the way we've done it in other actions. So now let's go back into this page. And when I save the record, we're successful. So again, edit, change that back, save it. And let's just make sure it works from both sides. So we'll go to the index action and I'll edit it here. And we're good to go. Okay, let's go back to the index page. So the last action we have to complete is the delete action, and we'll finish that up in the next screencast. Thanks for watching.